Hi everybody, my name is Billy. I'm a developer, researcher, and artist. I work for Cosmos Network, uh, Gnosis, and for myself on various other projects. Um, one of the things I think I'm most excited, excited about uh, when working with Ethereum and all these different cryptocurrencies is the, um, the fact that you actually sort of get exposed to uh, cryptography in general, a symmetric cryptography, and, and you kind of realize all the cool things you can do with that. And it's really exciting that actually it's, uh, it's been cryptocurrency, which has been the push to get kind of normal users to have a private key, to manage this private key, to have something like MetaMask. So thanks to cryptocurrency, you kind of get all of these really cool features, and um, the past few months or whatever, there's been multiple situations in which, uh, either for my own apps, I had to do authentication with MetaMask, where you kind of are able to do this amazing uh, authentication system, where you're not storing a password for a user, or um, preventing or presenting some sort of a, a password honeypot that you actually let your user sort of authenticate themselves. Uh, you see this in CryptoKitties, you see it in a lot of different apps. And so I did that a few times, and talking to other people, other projects, it kept coming up of, uh, oh, you know, actually you don't really even need a cryptocurrency for that, you just need a user with a private key that can do something X, Y, or Z. And for different reasons, it kept coming up like, oh, yeah, just authenticate them with their with a signature on something, and then give them access to whatever. Uh, the most common version of that was a chat room, so a couple weekends ago, I just decided to spin something up. Uh, the point of it being what's possible when users manage their own private keys. So because it was a weekend project, I decided to do it as fast as possible. So I used a bunch of evil centralized services. Uh, they make things go really easy. And they do a lot of the work for you. Um, but basically, this is a chat room built with Google Firebase, who offers really simple PubSub databases. Uh, it's hosted on a service called Netlify, which is just basically a wrapper for uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, using an Amazon Web Service uh, Lambda function for verification of a user signature. Uh, and I'm using amberdata.io, which is a kind of block explorer um, who keeps token balances for all ERC-20s and ERC-721s. So uh, if you just want to ask a, for a specific address and get all of the ERC-20s or 721 tokens they have, they have an API endpoint for that, which you don't really have at Etherscan or really even at OpenSea, uh, so I'm using them for that. But uh, without further ado, I can show you that the app works basically by clicking start, asking you to sign a message, hello world, by signing this message, blah, blah, blah. Sends it to a Lambda function, which makes sure that you actually have that address, checks Amber data for all your token balances, and then gives you authentication inside of Google Firebase for every single chat room that is namespaced by those contract addresses. So here you can see inside this account, I have some CryptoKitties, uh, some WEF. Uh, I made another project called ENS Nifty, which is uh, NFT wrappers for ENS names. So because I have those, I can chat in that room. Uh, I guess you can see there's a couple other people who had CryptoKitties who joined the chat at some point. There's uh, the lobby, where as soon as you've sort of been authenticated, you can jump in. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, I guess I can prove that I'm actually in here. Oh, the Berlin token. So if you were here during the Berlin Hackathon and you got any of these, you can sort of prove uh, or, or associate only with the people who also had them were here. Uh, so I don't know if that proves the fact that I'm actually in there or not. Uh, hey, it showed up in the other room. Is this live? Definitely live. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a big reveal. Uh, so, I mean, this is super simple. This is uh, something that ends up popping up in a lot of different projects. It can be used for a lot of different things. As I see more uh, sort of interesting non fungible token projects that are based around not necessarily speculating on a project, but having a community based around it, maybe the proof of work that goes into it is, is something more interesting than spending computer cycles or paying money. Maybe it's actually showing up to meetups, maybe it's actually showing up to events, maybe it's knowing somebody, maybe it's gifts, maybe it's uh, these kudos on Gitcoin. Uh, the idea that you would want to sort of create access determined by those sorts of communities is something coming up more and more often. And 
So I spun this up, it's all on GitHub. Uh, the authentication stuff, super easy, it's through the Lambda. Whether you want to use it with something like Firebase or with your own uh, social network or whatever, you'd have uh, basically the same configuration. So I spun it up just to get my mind around how to apply to different things. Uh, we'll be applying it to different projects for fun and profit maybe, but mostly just to see how it works. Feel free to jump in. Uh, I use Portis, actually I should list that on here too. Portis.io is a really nice uh, solution to uh, users who don't have wallets. So it's basically MetaMaskera, I think is the MetaMask alternative, where you sort of embed MetaMask as a JS file. Um, and they give you an address, they store your uh, key encrypted, so that when you use username and password, they will hand it back to you. You decrypt it in your browser and you can have the same experience. So if you put it up on Safari or on Google Chrome on your phone, you could actually log in and start chatting. Uh, probably you'd just be in the lobby because it's a new account without any token balances, but um, that's there, ready to use. This is just a weekend project, and this is just a light talk. Um, here, um, actually, I made, I made a job chat application like three, four years back uh, for Whisper. Now that the, actually the first time we used Whisper, and I really hope somebody will. And you know, like updated to the latest Whisper because the chat application never really saw the day of light for real. It's, uh, it, I think it's an Ethereum repository, and uh, you could easily use that interface for your little chat here. I mean, you can just overtake it and take the call where messages are retrieved and sent to Whisper with whatever you have here. Sounds like a great project. Full, full, <laughs> full, full nice looking uh, Whisper. It's called. Um, I think it's called Meteor something Whisper Chat in either under Ethereum or my GitHub repository. Uh, yeah. There's the new MetaMask process where it asks you, the new MetaMask asks you to connect with the dev when you start it. Does that actually sign a message under the hood? So. So then still you would have to do the signing of the message to be really authenticated. Right? The first time you visit, if you've never come to this site before, MetaMask will say, this site wants to know your address. You say, yeah, let it know my address. And then MetaMask will say, you want to sign this message. So uh, once you've done it the first time, it doesn't happen. So that's why it doesn't happen. Here, but. And also you should check out Token Talk. They're down. I think they're, I, somebody told me about it a week or two ago. And, I don't know if it's they're down forever or down temporarily, but okay. I mean, same thing, like I said, it's, it's not like uh, rocket science, but it was a fun project. <laughs> so more questions? Uh, nice looking project. Um, I was wondering, why do you use AWS Lambda? Why don't you do authentication client side? Uh, because the Google Firebase handles authentication for the users who you have permission to read and write from. Firebase is basically a giant JSON object, and each like branch you can give read and write permissions based on user IDs. So uh, first I check your uh, token balances, and then I give you read and write permission on all the branches that are namespaced by those tokens. So like, each branch has all the chats within each of them. So I need a, a private server somewhere who stores my uh, Firebase private key, or authentication, in order to give permission on a user to read and write to different chat rooms. Otherwise, you could just show up in any chat room and read and write to it. Okay, so it's not the, the mapping between username and address or something like that, more like access to the rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that kind of access could be for anything. It could be like Patreon style, it could be for blog posts, it could be for movies, it could be for songs, whatever. Uh, hi. Um, one question regarding the signed message. Isn't it insecure if it's always the same message? Because if someone gets a hold of it, they could just act as you because it's basically your identity, right? Yeah, if you wanted to be a little more secure, you should put a timestamp or an ox or something like that so that they can be timed out after a certain period. Yeah, exactly, it's what I'm doing with my project, and yeah, I think that's it's a great point. The way to go. <laughs> I am not taking security very seriously on this project. <laughs> <laughs> Some more questions?
Okay, I think that was it. Thank you very much, Billy.